Sometimes it feels like the sun will never rise, like the birds will never sing. That's right. When you don't know what to do, just keep on breathing. From the City of Angels in Los Angeles and the Big Apple in New York City, welcome to all my listeners out there in Radio Land. I am Dave, the Caregiver's Caregiver, at caregiverdave.com, along with my lovely co-host, Adrian Gruberg, at thecaregiverspace.org. Say hello, Adrian. Hi. And we're coming to you live and on demand 24-7 and on 21 global audio and video platforms like iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, HealthyLife.net, Vimeo, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, MixCloud, Listen Notes, Blueberry, Player FM, Podcast.com, VIP Internet Radio, TuneIn.com, Facebook Live, Owl's Tale, U-Book, CastBox, and of course, CaregiverDave.com. And we are proud to be voted number one caregiver podcast of the top 50 on Player FM, as well as one of the top six best podcasts of Caring.com as well as number three podcast out of thousands of caregiver podcasts on Feedspot. And we do have an exciting show planned for you today, don't we, Adrian? Of course yes, we, we do. do. Our guest today is Quisha Neal, and she's a best-selling author and author, uh, co-author, actually, with Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson. Is that the one? Yes, it is. Uh, three, 360 professional performance, award-winning author, revealing who you are, radio host in New York, WPTA, 9.30 a.m. Quisha, tell us what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> we're going to talk about eight steps to thrive as a caregiver. a girl. Yes. And I always like to ask my guests, just who is Quisha Neal? And why did God put her on this earth? Go ahead. It's all yours. He watched you, Neil. I have traveled five continents. I mm. was the first wow. lady. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was the first lady who ever launched a book with Theodore Roosevelt, played golf, the 26th president of the United States, in Lakewood, New Jersey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Just back up. Back it up. Yes. Theodore Roosevelt is like 270 years old. Now, how could you and do that? How can Did I do the S on record? The previous down life? This? No, this life here. Uh, it's on record in Lakewood, New Jersey. I was the very first woman to launch my book. Um, they never had a book launch there. They always have weddings and golf oh. events and things like that. But to come out of the norm and, la and launch your book, it was totally out of the norm for the staff there. And they practically enjoyed it because it was simple, it was complicity. And yeah. at this party, I didn't want certain people at certain table, just mingle. That's all I want you to just have fun. Let's talk about the book and mingle. And well, that's wait a minute, the did, they, did they enjoy it or did they practically enjoy it? <laughs> they, they enjoyed it. The staff okay, enjoyed it. You said as practically. The staff enjoyed it. No, the, the staff enjoyed it. And the, the environment was just totally different for what they expect. Really? Yeah. Something so you exceeded like, their you exceeded their expectations, is what you're saying? Yes, and they welcomed me back for any parties. <laughs> That's cool. Yes. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, Teddy would be uh, very grateful. I'm sure, he turned over in his grave to listen. We're talking about yes. Teddy Teddy's Roosevelt, right? Teddy's yes, Manhattan president of the United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. Teddy's Manhattan, Manhattan residence is just down the block from me. Well, we have a wow. lot in common, huh? <laughs> you know, I've never been there, Adrian. How come we should, it's you on should take me on a Park. tour? Is it impressive? I should I would like it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next next when I'm there in June we'll do that. We'll try <laughs> to find the tour. All right. So my mission. Yes, my mission, mission in life is to help women to come out of their comfort zone and stand ah. up. Yeah. To live their purpose. Because I'm mm. living my best life right now. I'm still a caregiver and I'm living my best life. So right. um, it can be done once you have your balance and tools. And this is what we're going to talk about today. 
That's what I keep saying, you know. I, I thought I was the only one who was so happy and also a caregiver because, uh, you know, there just aren't a lot of people out there. They got a, a sad face and, you know, their eyes are shot, bloodshot, and, mm-hmm. and they look like, you know, they got bags in their eyes. They haven't slept in a week. And you and I look like we just got back from vacation. Adrian, yeah. too. Excuse me, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> but Adrian's not a caregiver anymore. She's a former caregiver, so that doesn't right. count. But well, um, like caregivers, yeah. caregivers. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she's the caregivers' caregiver now, and um, <laughs> it's very important that um, the caregivers have fun, that they have joy, you know, that they have mm-hmm. peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, they're not going to make it. They're going to be that one of those thirty percent that dies. So let's talk about the eight steps. And uh, you listed eight things, so we'll just make those uh, the eight steps. So step number one would be what? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna tell you. You tell me. Since the virus, the coronavirus, coronavirus, right? Is there any other? Yeah, yeah, caregiving have changed. Really? Yes, it has. Yes, that's very recently. It's it's, it's changed. Tell me about it. It's changed. It's changing. I, I mean, can't even get on a plane without worrying. I I had to buy a mask, and twenty twenty of them out of thirty were sold out. Well, so I, go try and buy Purell. Right. Can you get it? I couldn't you even buy Lysol spray. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife says she couldn't buy toilet paper. Oh, so my. Figgy. All so, right, go on. I'll, I'll stop interrupting. Okay. okay. Um, caregiving have changed. Since this coronavirus, people fail to realize that as a caregiver, you may not be able to go out and go to those yoga and meet up with the, your friends and have social events. A lot of them haven't uh, been doing that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, it, you're going you're gonna to have to do a north, another alternative. And one other alternative is, besides taking care of yourself and washing your hands and making sure that you're complete, you're going to have to have family time, m- more time with your family inside your house, um, sewing and knitting and cooking together, playing games. This is what's missing, too, as a caregiver in our lives if we have family because we bombard ourselves with all the anxiety that threats us. Wow, you're talking the Waltons here. But you know what? <laughs> I, it may be the Waltons, but it's a safe Walton, yes. you know? Those uh, for right. right now, for right now, it's safe because people are not happy. What's what's going on in our environment? I mean, some people are not working right now because of what's going on. It's a state of emergency in New Jersey, in New York, and all over the place. They're telling you not to take the subway. Mm Mm-hmm. They're telling you. How are you supposed to get? They may even close it down. Mm Mm-hmm. As a caregiver, that's like a blackout. Remember the blackouts in, in New York? Yes. Just tell me how people who work at McDonald's are supposed to work from home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, they have robots. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. But who's going to make the food? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess the food-making robot is on order. <laughs> okay, I guess it is on order. It's going to take I'm... a while. Okay, so tip one is start spending quality time with your loved ones at home and not just the loved one, the the care receiver, but uh, right. the family, you know, the family. because there the there's typically a spouse at home and kids at home, and mm-hmm. and they're all you know sharing you with their loved one, and chances are the loved one's getting more of their uh, deservable time of the family time than uh, everyone else. So this is a good time to to make things straight and to right. even the score, so to speak. And not only that, as a caregiver, you know. A caregiver usually the one who have to think. They're the thinker. So let's think about getting a care bag ready. People out here panicking. They're getting all this water. <clears throat> Get a care bag, emergency bag ready. Anything happen, we have something to preserve us. Yeah, that's um, good. On the West Coast, we have those for earthquakes. Right. Because <laughs> we never know uh-huh. when an earthquake's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. In the Midwest, the it's tornadoes, you know. Because mm-hmm. the media is not talking about the care bags and no. the, the supplies that we should have in case, just in case we don't have it. 
You're and just I talking would... about how it's all Trump's fault. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. Some are. <laughs> no, they're not blaming it on Trump. They're just blaming the fact that it's not being dealt with properly. Mm-hmm. And this is not isn't our first. We had the SARS and and uh, what were some some of those other viruses that happened in the back? The Ebola. Ebola. Um, mm-hmm. And then um, the white powder the, stuff that we were afraid that everyone was anthrax, going to. Uh, anthrax. Anthrax. Yes. During, yeah. we have a, well, this is a laboratory. This is um, our first rodeo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but this this particular mm. virus is a man-made uh, virus that is the AIDS virus, a flu virus, and anthrax. Oh, my. And probably so for military put, purposes, right? They're trying to get the perfect yeah, virus as a, as a weapon. As a, as it was it probably up in their developed face. as a chemical weapon. Mm-hmm. And how it leads, we'll never know. But uh, it's it's a serious, it's it's a serious, serious combo. It's very serious, yes. yes. All right, so that's but, step number one. And that's a good step because not only will it uh, give family more time from the caregiver, but it will hopefully, hopefully, Give uh, family more opportunity to become more of a caregiver and give a break to the caregiver. Caregiver, caregiver. Hey. yeah, yes, it, it's so amazing. What's, what's step? What's step number two? I like that. Um, you got to have the confidence to endure. And let's just remind everybody: these are steps to do what? To thrive. To thrive. To get, That's right. To get uh, because you're all against uh, stress and burnout. And what was that other word you used? Um, uh, in your book, uh, come on, come on, come on. Yes. <laughs> What's your... Burnout and overwhelm. overwhelm. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. Right? Why That's your you word. Right? Yes. That's your word. That is you one of my words. Yeah. You should have known that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, number hey, there's two. There's a lot of stuff I should have known. Okay. Number yeah. two. Number two, you got to have confidence. 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 I like that. Have the confidence to endure as a caregiver. Mm-hmm. And what happens when you don't have confidence, right? They say a dog can tell when you're scared and you're isn't in trouble, that, right? They can isn't that amazing? It. And the yes. carry can smell when the caregiver is fearful <laughs> or, or not confident mm-hmm. or and they just walk all over you, right? Right. So let me just give you an example. This is how I... Yeah, please do. I was happy that in my childhood, my father always told all of us that a quitter never wins. I didn't understand it until I got older. (laughs) I didn't understand it. But as I got older and I got out of his house and I understood that I had a lot of things that I couldn't quit on. I couldn't quit on myself. I couldn't quit on my goals, the things that I had for me. No one is going to walk your path but you. I didn't understand that. So I use that model in a lot of my my life now. A quarter never wins. I live by it now. I instill it in my heart. And it's like an imprint, basically. Everybody, that's like a slogan. So, and I remember reading in the Bible somewhere, as a caregiver, Jesus didn't leave his brother or sister, to care for his parents, his mother. He left the disciples. I was like, oh, my God. Mm. And that was like a wow factor for me. So if you're chosen to do it, it's an honor and a privilege to be a caregiver because you're going to learn so many obstacles. Yeah, you may have your stagnating moments, but you're going to learn from these stagnating moments, and you're going to be able to accomplish what you want to do with, with your stagnating moment. You're going to look back and you say, I did it. So having confidence and courage. I love your accent. And courage, I yeah. I can't figure out if it's from Brooklyn or, or Jersey or both. I'm just an in-between girl. <laughs> my, mom and dad, my mom and dad was raised in North Carolina. And oh. Yes, we're Carolina. A little seasoning of that, yeah. Yes, and a little hospitality. <laughs> it goes a long way, though. <laughs> you only need a little bit of anything in life. Just It goes along. If it's good, a little bit is good. It carries right. you. It carries the torch. 
But um, All right. so it's very important for caregivers to have confidence. Absolutely, okay. uh, not only so that they can portray it, but they need to feel good about what they're doing. Otherwise, they're just going to be, oh, I'm not making a difference. Oh, what am I doing here? Oh, woe is me. Oh, blah blah blah. I'm never going to be a Debbie Downer. Husband. Yeah. And you know, I like the they're going to fire me also, from my job. Mm -hmm. well, I like the fact you also said prophecies. courage. Yes. C -c 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 courage. Courage. Courage, yeah. C -c 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 -c. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it is needed. Courage and confidence. Because yeah, sometimes you do it with... like a soup and sandwich. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's what's number three, and then we'll take a break. Why is it important to put yourself first? Oh. We know. Voice. Th yes. We know about the oxygen mask. You put yours on first. You know, yep. we all know that. But, you know, you got to get your sleep, eat right, exercise. But just bring it to our day. With the virus going on, the coronavirus, we're going to have to pull that oxygen tank a little bit more tighter now. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Because, yeah, because we may need to help our neighbors, someone in our community. It could be through a monetary donation. It could be through um, purchasing an extra emergency bag for someone. We don't know what we're going to face, but we got to be ready. And also, in that emergency bag, what we need to include is some vitamin C and, and purchase some lemon balm to keep ourselves calm. <laughs> Things like, you know, because there's a lot going on here, you know. <laughs> it's a lot going on. And I, when I thought about this topic, I said I have to bring it current because I'm a caregiver. And these are some of the things that I'm doing with my mother, who's 84 yeah. years young. And I find that it works, and it, it just approving. I'm proving, and I'm seeing that the strategies are working. We're planning ahead. You can't plan the last moment because you get nothing done. Right. And this is yeah. So the lemon bomb. Make sure you purchase it. I'm not advertising it, but you gotta relieve the stress. And we're talking about eight steps to help us avoid burnout, overwhelm, and stress. Those are good things for caregivers to avoid, don't you think? Yes. So we've already been on step number one, which is, uh, especially during the coronavirus time, uh, spend more quality time with your loved ones, not only your care receiver, but for you know your family at large, the spouse, the kids. The teenagers, the babies, change a diaper or two <laughs> if you're not already doing that. Step number two, have confidence. You know, you got to know that you can do what you're doing. You know, as the guy says, you can do it. And uh, that will give your care receiver confidence, too, that they're in good hands and they're not going to worry that you're going to, you know, put some arsenic in their coffee or something by accident uh, instead of uh, killing the roaches and so on. Okay, I'm being silly now. <laughs> so, Kawisha, um, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Thank you very <laughs> and much. And why don't you give us step number three to uh, she did. avoid number that four. stress? We are number four. Yeah. yeah. We are number four. Number did we? Four. What happened to three? Yeah. Did I? Oh, yes, three. number first. Put yourself first, silly yeah. me. Duh. Mask first, <laughs> That's one you know? of your favorite ones. I, I was it is one of my favorite ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so, you know, if, if you go down, everybody goes down. You know what yeah. they say? If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. happy right? All right. Step number four. Thanks for keeping me straight here. <laughs> <laughs> Why good uh, communication? Why is it good to have good communication as a caregiver? Now, I found it very beneficial because as a caregiver, we get sick as well, or incidents happen to us. Or, mm. for an example, I had to have a surgery. And I did not know that my sister, kids, were surprising her to Florida. So I broke mm. the surprise because I, I, I went to my nieces and nephews. I said, when are you going to be taking my sister to Florida? And that was the date of my surgery. So... 
I called my brother who lives in Virginia. So I had to ask for help, you know, because as a caregiver, usually there's one child the parents usually cling to the most. <laughs> yeah. And Poor I Charlie. seem to be the one child. <laughs> You're the lucky one. You're the chosen yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. And um, I can see why. You have a lovely smile and a great temperament <laughs> and a disposition. Thank you very Who much. Who wouldn't want to be around you? <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to have a surgery. And this surgery put me down for quite a while, you know. And um, my brother, he came up. I asked for help. I couldn't do it. I couldn't take her to the doctor. I couldn't take her to food shopping or whatever she need or her, you know, things that was important to her at that time. I couldn't do it. So he came in and took over while my sister went on vacation and I was home recovering from the surgery and she came back and she took up the slack. So I'm going to tell you, you have to have a support team. It may not be your family, but anybody have caregive, they know how difficult, difficult it can be. Usually, they will help you out. 90% of the chance, they will help you out. Some way, some form, they're going to say, yes, I can help you. So your support team is a must, must have. Communication, must, must have. It may, you, may have to, you may have to communicate with a brother or sister or siblings that you may be quarreling with. But to get the job <laughs> done, it's yep, realistic. Yeah. You have to do it. So keep the doors open. If the doors of communication. Step, yes, keep those doors of communication open. I mean, if you're mad at each other, hey, I'm mad, but this is my title right now. This is my situation <laughs> right now. If you're Y'all mad, get, get over it. it. Get, over get over it. it. Yeah. So. But how um, do you how do you do that? Get over it. Uh, I'm not doing you it. You did right it good. Here. Yeah, <laughs> I think you there you go. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> that's yeah, communication is is very good, and and boundaries. That's why I like to throw in boundaries too, because <laughs> a lot of people are always getting offended. You know, they're so sensitive. Why are you being so sensitive? And uh, you know, it's because people are offending you, right. and they're doing it over and over and over again. And whose fault is that? Kawisha, isn't that our own fault because we didn't because we tell have, them where the line it. was that you should mm-hmm. never cross? No, 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 right. no, no, right? And when mm-hmm. they do it again and again, we just silently keep it to ourselves, let the resentment and the anger and, and the bitterness up. build up, and then it explodes, and it isn't And pretty. then we're mad at the world, right? <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> even God. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, so so what what should they do instead? How do you... Tell someone who keeps crossing the line, and the reason why you don't tell them is because you don't like confrontation, and you know you're a peacemaker, and you don't want anybody mad at you, and you're a yes person, and and you're a people pleaser, and uh, and but uh, you know you you just say into yourself, they should know that this hurts me, they should know. Well, they don't, obviously they don't know. No, they don't know. Just, yeah. So how do we tell them? Uh, and and give them consequences if they do it again, you know, get a little grace, but then they got to have accountability, right? This this recently happened to me like this week. So really? the, you, yeah, this um, <laughs> this recently happened. How did I know that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what I did, I practiced in my head what I was going to say, and I did. In the mirror we all too. do well. it. We practice it. I'm glad I did because I didn't put all my emotions in it when I did. I picked up the phone, so it happened. The person called. It was just the right timing. So timing is mm-hmm. everything. And yeah. I answered the phone. I was so happy. So, and then I went into what I wanted to say. And I just mm. went in to discuss how I felt about a situation, and it went very smooth. So timing is everything. <laughs> Don't rush into it. Maybe you have to practice what you say, but the tone of voice is what kills the person. Yeah. Uh, did we lose Adrian? I don't see her anywhere. Oh, I'm Adrian. right here. Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, the tone of somehow voice. Somehow your little somehow your I little picture isn't isn't well, little. Quisha's on... picture isn't on my screen, so. No, I don't oh, see well, her neither. Maybe that's a setting that I can do. <laughs> now I can see yeah. her. How about uh, <laughs> now? Maybe. 
All right. So uh, that that's a great story. So so you give boundaries. I always like to use an example like, hey, you know, uh, you I told you, or maybe I didn't tell you, but I'm telling you now that what you did yesterday is totally unacceptable, and I will not tolerate that kind of behavior, the way you spoke to me or the mm-hmm. way you uh, disrespected me or the way you insulted me in front of people. No, 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 that's not going to happen. And okay. and this is your warning. First one's free. You know, it's like uh, the attorney <laughs> says, dog bites, right? The first yes. bite is free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> After mm-hmm. that, you're going to pay. <laughs> right. So mm-hmm. if you do that again, this is what will happen. And That's they're going to test it. Exactly. They will do it again. Mm-hmm. And you can either uh, remind them again and say, hey, remember I reminded you? Here's the penalty. Or if you feel generous, exactly. say, one more, more chance. Right? We do that with our kids, right? Mm-hmm. How many one more chances do we give oh, our kids? And it but, goes on but and no, on. You and just on. only give one more, not two, mm-hmm. ten, twenty, one more. And then you have to uh, enforce it. And like a two year old, they will behave. Exactly. Because you would. Right? Yeah. We have to stop you... rewarding bad behavior and yeah. stop enabling people, stop uh, rescuing them from their foolish mistakes so that they don't. The, the pain of their mistakes is supposed to teach them not to touch yeah. that hot stove. Yeah, right. We're always there pulling their hand away so they don't know, and, and we're mm-hmm. not doing them any favors. No, we're not. No, we're not. I like what you said about uh, the next day. Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to wait mm-hmm. and calm down mm-hmm. until you know that what you say is going to be heard because right. your tone of voice will be right. Yeah, the, the tone. Keep yourself from reacting too fast mm-hmm. because you'll very often that anger yeah. is, is counterproductive. It, it is. It is. Yeah. And you know and what? It's not, it's not what help. we say. It's how we say it. Go ahead. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you'll get help because um, we all need help now, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need some help. Mm-hmm. Let's go on to tip We're up to five. five. Okay. Hi, we're just moving right along here. What are some ways you can benefit from the workload of a caregiver? What are some ways you can balance, I'm sorry, balance your workload as a caregiver? That's an interesting question. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, this is what I've done. Everything I'm telling you, these are the. this is what made my life as a caregiver better than it was before. <laughs> because you learn from caregiving. <laughs> um, one, if you can take a family leave from work, take it. Two, if you can work part-time, avoid bringing your job home and avoid working overtime. And gather and meet people. Have functions in your house. Don't talk about work when you're with them. <laughs> Get to know that person. We get to these gatherings and networking. Sometimes, sometimes we just we know this person have a special a specialty or, or something like that. Just get to know them and see what are the characteristics in them that play a big part in his or her life. Besides what shine, because they say what shine is always it's not always gold, it's not always um, what you think it should be. So just get to know that person. Balance is the key to a, a happy way of dealing with mm-hmm. caregiving, just in life, mm-hmm. just in life. As a confidence coach, I teach balancing and not living with regret because when you've done all you can, your conscious tell you all, you've done all you can. So balance, balance. You're right. Mm-hmm. Your, really, your body tells you, I done all I can. It's, it's amazing. When my father passed away, and uh, I was there for the last breath, and I, I said, I done all I can. Mm-hmm. And I said, don't need to take that. I, I said to myself, That's because a you guilt-free talk to yourself. That's a statement, too. Mm-hmm. You, you, you talk to yourself, and I said, no need to take all this hospital home. Stuff home right. anymore because he's not going to need it. Right. I left it all there, and I was at peace with myself because I've done all I can. So, you're so wise. 
Yes. No, I did. I I was very fortunate that that mm -hmm. that was the case with me. I don't know how it happened, mm -hmm. but I yeah. felt I had done everything right. I had done mm -hmm. all that I could. I was mm -hmm. there until the last breath too. Oh, you! And oh, wow! Mm -hmm. I was yeah. My hand was on mm -hmm. his chest when he died. Yes. And um, it it made <clears throat> all the people around me mm -hmm. who hadn't taken part. In his caregiving, that should have, right. mm -hmm. they were the ones with regret. Not mm -hmm. his wife. Right. I was fine. Mm -hmm. But they were ber bereft. Right. Because mm -hmm. they have done the right thing. Yeah. So when you're done, it's something how all your emotions just come down on you. And you know what? It's a calm feeling over it you. It is. You've done. I, I experienced it. So, um, um. Oh, I don't want to get so teary here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I experienced it, so I know the feeling. So living with regrets, you don't have to. Revealing who you are will teach you the steps of life, how to find you. And I'm so happy that I was able to um, have that experience. Like I said, it was an honor because I've mm -hmm. learned so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, balance is so good. You know, we're <laughs> we're either on one side of the pendulum or on the other side of the pendulum. Mm -hmm. And you know, these personality tests and these temperament tests, where it says, you know, well, you're money motivated, you're fun motivated, mm -hmm. you're uh, save mm -hmm. the whales motivated, all this stuff. <laughs> right. um, no, no one temperament, and of course, there's the accountants and engineers who are the boring people, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and and there's no one temperament that is right. It's a it's usually a balance of mm -hmm. all of them together, you all know, because it. because conservatives, if the world was run by conservatives, uh, you know, there would be no planet left. If the world was run by the uh, liberals, you know, uh, we wouldn't pay our bills. So there has to be. Right. So true. Uh, a mix of everything, you know. Everything. God made us all, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. and husbands usually find the opposites that attract, the, attract. Uh, in their spouse, mm -hmm. and they can either fight for the rest of their lives because they disagree on everything. Everything, <laughs> yes. Uh, our government is like a marriage, and it's a bad marriage. Why don't they it's a bad you know, get along? Yeah, yeah. they That's, need marriage counseling. Yeah, or a divorce, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, a divorce. Oh, that, oh, we I'd had like one of those in, uh, in 1865. It didn't turn out very well. <laughs> it didn't. No, you're right. It didn't. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah. So. So, um, what was I going to say about the balance? Uh, guilt. Guilt is a powerful mm -hmm. word because um, if you don't have balance, uh, like you said, I, I did all I can. If you didn't feel that way, you'd feel guilty mm -hmm. that you could have done more or you could have right. done it differently. And then there's always people to come around and say, "Girl, why'd you do that? You know, what's the matter with you? Uh, right. you your mama's uh, rolling over in her grave." And and uh, really, that's what really? you that's your message Isn't to me. This this, they uh, say to you, girl, more guilt, <laughs> more guilt, more guilt. Mm -hmm. I say to you, they say, "Girl, why'd you do that?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. That's, that's how they say it in Jersey. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So what's uh, six? What is what's six? six? What is six? Not sex, six. Six. Yes, what is six? Number six is, why is it important to have a social life as a caregiver? That's so important. They forget about it. They, some people that are caregiving, they stay in the house. And they mope. You got to get out. You gotta mingle. You gotta find your passion because there's one for everyone on this earth. And get to know who you are. Once you get to know who you are, I tell you, there's many hitting talents, many hitting talents in you. Yeah. Um, it is. I'm a surprise testimony yourself. to that. And yes, you surprise yeah. yourself. I did that. Yeah, I did. did you think it? you'd be on the radio talking and uh, your face I all over the world? I didn't think that. No, <laughs> I, I never thought all these mad, all these amazing things would happen to me. I never yeah. thought it. Okay. If I didn't think out of my comfort zone, and if I didn't try something different, and I didn't let my problems 
wear me down with a lot of guilt or not feeling who I am. So, but how'd that uh, happen? Who who was who was your mentor? Who was pushing you? Who was who was telling you, either pulling you or pushing you? I gotta tell you that what my father told me, because he was my he was everything to me. He was my hero. He was everybody knew I was a daddy girl. And man, <laughs> so fortunate about, to have had yes. to have had a, a, a daddy at home. A lot yes, of kids don't. They're mm-hmm. lucky if they have one parent. Yes. And we would, we would talk about the stock market. We would talk about <laughs> um, yeah, and, uh, the really? NASDAQ. Yes, we would talk about all the – we would talk about everything, the weather, the dew points, everything, you know. Because I recall when you watch news back in the day, they used to tell you the dew points, the weather, and all this stuff. And I used to write it down. It was just times we had together. You know, every day I would write it down. We would talk about it. But he had really inspired in my life to be the woman that I am and who I became. Yeah, we baseball games, football games, you name it, family vacations, that support. I was loved and unlike. And cherished. I was cherished. And, you know, that gift that he gave me life, I did my best with it and what uh, happened to him uh, my father had say? bone cancer so and it mm. metastasized so there's no cure right oh. now we How tried old homeo- he, or... my father was is 75. he still alive is he no. still alive no he's dead died at 75. My... yes um he died uh march this is the month march 24 2009 that's like i'm you know i will tell anybody it's a amazing. Ago? March two um two thousand and nine. Oh. Two thousand and nine. Oh, like ten, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Ten, years. Eleven, eleven years. Eleven. Yeah. yeah wow. So um, this was an honor to come on here and talk about caregiving to me because it's going to take a lot of love on both parts to uh, endure. Were you able to care for your dad as well? Yeah, I, I caregive him. Yeah. Yeah, and I care give for my mom. So yeah. it's a circle of life. It is a circle of life. It it's is. a circle of life. Yeah. <laughs> and I um it's just an honor to be here. For those who are going through this, I can tell you the road sometimes seems difficult. Mm. But there's a lot of experience that you're gonna learn. And you're gonna take those experience and you're gonna cherish those experience and you're gonna find that they will benefit you throughout the rest of your life. Even the good times, the bad times, the times you're down, <laughs> the times you don't want to good, be bothered. You good, need the to bad, be bothered. The ugly. Yeah, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. So um Yeah. He so was you gotta mentor. eat right, you gotta sleep right, you can not neglect yourself. No, you can't. Uh, go to the movie with that friend that you usually go to. You know what we mm-hmm. do is we, we isolate ourselves because we're we so Debbie Downer. Nobody wants to be around us. They're, yeah. you know, all we want to do is complain to them about, you know, our day and this and that. Save that for a caregiver support group because that's, they're, they're yeah. going to tell you uh, complaints too. You can complain to each other, but mm-hmm. save your friends for uplifting, happy times. Otherwise, right. they're not going to come around. They're going to stop calling. And then you're going to be all alone. You're going to be and alone. We and we don't and want you to. then eat right, do. sleep right. Mm-hmm. Because we don't want mm-hmm. you to be by yourself. Because we don't yeah. want you to fall into a depression or right. make the situation a heart attack, stroke. Because people get sick over caring for people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And some even die. Yes. Before the, the ones they're caring for. They're so worried about taking care of the, their loved one. Mm-hmm. And it's like uh, the caregiver who needs shoes or the marriage counselor who needs uh, marriage counseling. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, mm-hmm. they end up... Uh, they're trying to keep them alive, and they're the ones that die. They the you know, ones that die. It's just so ironic. Yeah. All right. You Let's know what? Number. Oh, go ahead. I gotta tell you. About mm-hmm. three years ago, I told my mother, "I want to have a party." <laughs> she said, "What kind of party you want?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, let me go home and think about this party." So I said. I know what I want. I don't want a party. 
I want to have a family reunion. Get together with your loved ones, people, because it's missing. We had a family reunion, and people were surprised. It started on the cornucopia, which went up to, um, it's a ship, it's a cornucopia. And the people was amazed to put a grin or a smile on their face to let them know that you are needed, you are loved, to come out of your comfort zone, to come out of the work mode. Put that aside and just breathe. Let air flow through you. Oxygen is what's missing in our life. Yeah. The, the real oxygen, you know, is missing. And, yeah. and no psychology, very few doctors are telling you that. You need oxygen. <laughs> Not the one that you put on the mask to save your life, but the one that right. can flow through you. <laughs> you need oxygen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Preach it, sister. <laughs> so put put some oxygen in your life. Live life, you know. Yeah, Dance I love the, the cover music. of your book behind you. What is that? Yeah. You or is that somebody this else? Is my book. Uh, my book is called "Revealing Who You Are." Revealing who you are. Seven chapters of complete happiness. And seven, um, the number of perfection. Exactly. <laughs> And I can tell you, if and if any of your audience come to the website revealing who you are, they get a uh -huh. free fifteen minutes coaching session with me. Oh wow! It's free. Yeah, Great. because it's free. yeah, it's wow. free. Because are you getting many takers on the fifteen minute free coaching session? Well, I am because people need confidence. Yes. And I would like to show them how to have the strategies to be confident. That's missing in the world. If you use yeah. confidence in every aspect of your life, your life becomes, you can breathe. You have the oxygen. Mm -hmm. Because the same confidence you use for this tactic, you can use for that tactic. It doesn't change. You just got to learn the strategies. Do you find it true that most people who should be contacting you don't? <laughs> well, I, mean, I feel it's, like the... It's like, uh, a guy tried to go on the streets of Manhattan and well, give away ten dollar bills. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And he couldn't mm -hmm. give away a single one because people are just saying, "No, no, no, there must be a catch," you know. Yeah, right. Uh, there must mm -hmm. be a catch. There's no free lunch. Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. Right. And mm -hmm. and I'm giving away free coaching as as well, you know, and oh, a, a awesome. free ebook mm -hmm. and but yeah, not uh, not enough people are doing it. You know, they they should be just like uh, just like roaches just. <laughs> You know, wanting yeah. this free stuff. But that but, those are caregivers, you know. But, you know, the few that takes it, they find the abundance. Oh, yeah. They find yes. the joy in their life. They find their purpose and their passion. And they're able to deal with caregiving and work lifestyle and family lifestyles better. Yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we can go on to seven, number seven. Tip one is uh, this is to how how a caregiver can avoid burnout and uh, stress and overwhelm. And number one is uh, you know quality time. Spend some quality time with your family at home, your wife, your kids, your loved one as well. And uh, you know you can give some of the time that they've been missing from you to them and your kids and spouse can start uh, taking up more to, of the caregiver time. And so it's a win-win situation. Number two is confidence. Got to have some confidence. Confidence in yourself so you feel good about what you're doing, so they feel good and safe about what you're doing for them. Three, put your needs first, obviously. Without oxygen mask first, uh, you're both going down. Uh, number four, communication and boundaries. You need to make sure you communicate so that you protect yourself and uh, you're not hurting them by enabling them and protecting them from their uh, bad habits. You know, bad habits are supposed to have consequences. Consequences are supposed to hurt. And when they hurt, then you won't do them again. But so many people want to rescue um, uh, the loved one from making the mistakes, our children as well, you know. Right. Um, you ever try to make a drug addict quit drugs? It's not easy. <laughs> uh, number five is balance. You know, you want to just, um, is that, did I just say that one? Yeah. No. No. Did I? A, okay. No. Number five is balance. And that's, uh, you know, you can't be uh, up or down. 
a, a, a sprinter can't be sprinting in a marathon. He's got to slow it down and take it easy because it's a long-term race, you know. He'll never make it to the end. That's fine if you're just going for, uh, you know, uh, 100 yards or something. And number six was uh, the importance of having social life. You want to make sure that you are not neglecting your friends and uh, that you are just having a good time. You're eating right. You're sleeping right. You're just having fun, you know, enjoying life mm -hmm. like I am and like right. Kawisa is and like Adrian used to when she was a caregiver <laughs> and still is after a caregiver. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of caregivers get depressed after their loved one dies. Um, uh, and I know your loved one wouldn't want you to be depressed that they died because they're yeah. probably in a better place. Number mm -hmm. seven, um, smile. Smile. Remember that song, Smile When Your Life Is break when your heart is breaking and so on and so uh, number eight wait we did we, we do number, seven? Do number yeah. seven let's talk uh, about savage I stole your thunder. You? yeah i'm gonna cut that out me? like it never happened okay kawisha tell us about number seven <laughs> okay why would you say it's important to smile as a caregiver <laughs> you're asking me one it well especially your if you have it, good if you have good teeth, you should always smile. If you don't have good teeth, you should go get them fixed. <laughs> there are There's something where, to that. Yeah. There are places where you'll feel better just, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, put their hands over their mouth. And, uh, yeah. Or whenever they laugh, they put their hands over their mouth because I don't know why. But obviously they feel it's bad true. about their looks. But yes. there are there are dental um, hot, um, uh Clinics who yeah. uh, dental students will work on your teeth for free. You know, there's really no excuse. And also because if you smile, the smile is contagious. That so your loved one will smile. Exactly. And if you if your loved one's down in the dumps uh, and you want to bring them up, the first thing you can do is put on a happy face. And and, and as a guy, I always said there are girls who are beautiful. And there are girls who could be beautiful if they would just smile, you know. And also abuse your. That's probably system. a sexist remark, but I don't care. No, I. Uh, <laughs> that's, a per that's a personal feeling. Yeah. A, yeah, a personal. True. Who doesn't like to look at things of beauty? And we're all beautiful in our own sight. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then a, a couple other things: a, a smile can mm. boost your immune system. Oh, how, yeah. did, how, did, how does that work? And Adrian's boost nodding her head system. like she knew this, and I don't know that. <laughs> how can a smile boost your immune system? I want to hear about that. The way to boost your immune system is the cells yeah. inside. In other words, it's those endorphins and everything. You know, they're all working, and you know, they're very happy. You know, it's like, ooh. Endorphins. Yeah. I heard about them. So, you're, endorphins. And you're full of endorphins. I can just see they're coming <laughs> yes, out of your pores. <laughs> you know, it's just this a smile, and you get that respond back, as you say. Um, it goes <laughs> a long way because people don't are, use it. They don't smile. You are, they, you are adorable. That's all I can thank say. You very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <A> cutie pie. <laughs> they, they don't smile, and then they don't. They say, "I don't have friends." The reason why you don't have friends is because you don't smile. You would be surprised. Yeah. You smile somebody. So, hey, what's your phone number? That's, yeah. Tell them to look in the mirror yes, you're and make much more approachable when you smile. Yeah. yeah. Just look in the mirror and make a face like you're about to punch somebody. You know, you're scary looking. Mm -hmm. so now smile. Oh my gosh, what a change! You're like a different person. Yeah, it's the smile. Yeah. Those are very it's good worth, reasons to smile. Yes, it's worth many words. You know. That's yep. True. Yep. It's worth many words. It's, it's, you know, they say music can soothe a savage beast, but actually a smile can. Mm -hmm. You know, a dog that's barking you at you uh, can tell if you're smiling. They just kind of, hmm, mm. better back yeah. off. This might do be Do you know who guy. wrote the song Smile? Uh, yes, songs. I do. Charlie Chaplin, right? That's right. That was the first one. I love that song. I sing it a yeah. lot. Yep. Yeah. Very important. All right. Number eight. Uh, number eight. How and why should you take a deep breath? 
That felt good. Felt good. I'm going to do another one. Inhale. Ah, hell. <laughs> See there? And you're smiling. So <laughs> you can't help but smile when you exhale because you almost killed yeah. yourself. <laughs> yes! <laughs> So Glad to be alive. <laughs> you're happy to be here. And uh, there's some reason why you're, the breathing, the emotions, it's a part of emotion, too. So our emotions play so many factors on who we are. Yeah. Um, Remember, are Adrian, we, we had a guest on the show who spoke nothing about but breathing. Mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah. It's and also wow. my new book trailer I just got back, you know, with the new cover and the new title because mm -hmm. my old one was kind of out of date. Even the the uh, caregiverscaregiver.com was out of date because now we're caregiverdave.com. So I'm excited about that. So what else can you say about number eight besides breathing? If you can't breathe, get some get a tank of oxygen and breathe, you know, put the, yeah, put, you, put the you cup need... on your mouth. Yeah, you need to uh, really take time to breathe. Because, well, those are great tips. Because um, as it opened up the airwaves of the vocal, and it, you're able to contract less tension as you breathe. So, and what does um, it do on a cellular level? On a cellular level, oxygen, oxygen, more yeah. endorphins, endorphins. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's good. Yeah, so it it's is. good. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not bad. You should do it. Yeah. And when you so, when you concentrate on on uh, the breathing, mm -hmm. and focus on the areas where you have tension, when you exhale, you'll be able to release a lot of that tension. So mm -hmm. yes, it's a, it's breathing with the focus that really helps. I my eye watch tells me. Mm -hmm. Take a breath. It's time yes, to take time. a breath. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> it's so important. You know. So, so let's take the next three minutes or so and tell us about your book and why you wrote it and what's in it and why, why it will help people and where they can get it. Well, revealing who you are. I wrote this book when I found out who I were. I couldn't write <laughs> it before. Um, because it starts off that... You're a beautiful person, and you started off perfect, but down the line, we got sidetracked with life, and this is what happened to most people. When you get sidetracked, you don't think of any other way. You don't think of your goals. You don't think of the things that you want to do. You are blind. You become blind. You become blind to society because you become very routine. Routine is dull. Go to work, get up, go home. It's dull. Take care of the kids. Not whatever. Happy. Is, you're not happy. You're not finding joy. This is what we really need in our life, joy. Because joy is better than happy. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I like happy that. Happy is temporary. <laughs> yes. Joy is permanent. Permanently. So yeah. we get to happy first, and then we'll take it to joy. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I find that people are more scared in fear of themselves. As technology moves forward, you have to move forward too. 1975, yes. you cannot do what you did in 1975 today. You can't. It's irreal. It's unreal. I have a chapter in the book. It says, get to know you. Once you get to know yourself, as we said before, there are traits and passions and things you never thought of. I never thought I'd be on a radio show. I never thought I'd write a book with Sir Richard Branson. It's because I reached out. You have to get nosy sometimes in life. <laughs> nosy about yourself. And I got oh. nosy about myself. You well, know? I'm already there. <laughs> <laughs> I got nosy about myself. Where would my next destination was going to be? I was on a job that I wasn't happy with. I had to move. I knew I loved to talk and I love people. So I had to find a strategy so my voice can get heard and that I can also be able to help people monetize their life, monetize their lifestyles too. And that became a win. Once I found out that, that became a win. And um, 
it have made me travel. It have endorsed me to travel the world, to try different cultures of food, to volunteer in South Africa, which I've done. I mean, it have took me in many in many many areas of life, and I advise anybody to uh, step out, get to know who you are, become a different person. If you feel that the person you're not, find the person that you should be. Awesome. Because as a caregiver and as a giver, you still have to find out who you are. Yeah. Amen. So how, how can we get a hold of you if we want to buy your book or just have, a, have our free 15-minute coaching session? <laughs> you can go to my website, revealingwhoyouare.com, uh -huh. and... Um, you can get a free 15 minutes coaching session. And also, I have a workbook that goes along with this. Once I get to connect with you, I can give, send you the workbook. Um, it's called Rebuilding Who You Are Workbook. And it gives you the same 10 strategies that I thought of when it was time for me to become an entrepreneur. The 10 strategies, the 10 secrets, the 10 questions I thought of that I ponder of and no doubt you may think the same question so um, like um, what will be my legacy why am I scared what is preventing me to do what I want to do these are some of the questions that I put in this workbook because um awesome as this AI technology come in to force full force, there's going to be a lot more changes. <laughs> so are you ready for the change? Or are you going to sit no. here in 1975, 1980, 2000? Yeah, right. Uh, you know, Nothing worse than being stuck in the 70s, something. man. Yeah, hey, dude. So. <laughs> yes. I know a lot of people who are. <laughs> they yeah. still have the same certs. Yes. All right, Adrian. How do we get a hold of you? Somebody wants Adrian. to know more about Pegasus Space and your and your um, your groups. <laughs> it's Adrian at the Caregiver Space dot org, and you'll get to go to all the links to social media sites that we're on at the bottom of the home page, and on Facebook we have. I'd say about 15 different forms at this point, which are support groups for specific groups. Mm -hmm. And if you don't find one that you feel like you belong in, uh, let me know and we'll see if we can get one going. All right, guys. Thank I'm you. So God today. bless you. Uh, I'm so I happy to. to. I hope to <laughs> meet you both again. And you know what? I feel it, and I believe you very genuinely. Thank you so much. Thanks so God much. God bless you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye for now. Okay. Sometimes it feels like the sun will never rise, like the birds will never sing again. Keep breathing. Take it in. Don't